So I'm Bethany Collins. This is my exhibition, Even Song. Um, the heart of the show is focused around the Odyssey. All of my work is language-based, but in 2017 I picked up Emily Wilson's translation of the Odyssey. She's the first woman to translate this ancient text into English for the first time, 2017. There exist about 60 translations before hers. Um, I was looking primarily at book 13. So this ancient text of exile and homecoming and feeling very unfamiliar in your own land is very much the heart of the show. And um, that focuses itself in book 13. When Odysseus, after 10 years at war, 10 years weeping on every wrong shoreline he lands on, finally reaches his own country, his land, he stands on the shoreline of his home and doesn't recognize the place. And that for me felt like a way to think about what it means to belong to a place that doesn't always claim you back and also as a kind of metaphor for the last four years after the 2016 presidential election that you can look around at your own country and it can feel simultaneously familiar and estranging. So the Odyssey works um, take up a lot of real estate in even song. They are the heart of the show, even of the wallpaper. Um, and I'm looking at various translations of the Odyssey from 1850s all the way up until Emily Wilson's 2017 translation. So this text, um, these are all kind of translations of that moment that Odysseus looks out at the, the ocean. So after 400 years and 60 translations, you would think we would at least know what the water was doing, right, when Odysseus looks out at his, from his homeland. But instead, the translations of the water run the gamut. It is a whispering surf line, or it's the tumultuous, deep-voiced waves, or it's the deep sea rumbling and booming, or it's the deaf rocks. There is no agreement in the text, right? Even this ancient text, we cannot find a kind of agreement um, within it. And I'm always interested in the ways that I mean, I'm interested in this, this moment and thinking about Odysseus and the Odyssey as a metaphor for this moment, but more broadly of the way that language will forever fail, right? Um, because we made it. It is an extension of us. It is a very human endeavor, and it has infinite capacity, and it is also bound to fail. And that contradiction is endlessly fascinating to me. So there's an essay that Maggie Nelson, I mean, for someone who loves language, I love other people's language. So Maggie Nelson writes this essay, I think it's called Writing With, From, and For Others. I might have a preposition wrong. Um, and she talks about finding it perfectly acceptable to make the work, in her case writing, for her own innate pleasure. I think of the work in the same way, that I make the work because there is a problem in the world, there is a problem in the archive, and there's something that I need to figure out. So I make it for self. She also goes on to then say it can be a really generous act to leave the reader alone, right? That it is a vote for his or her autonomy to leave them alone. And so I never know what will come from the work, what the viewer will take from the work. I know where it begins, and for me that's a bit, that's enough. Mm. Just as an aside, a lot of the work is intentionally hard to see. Um, oftentimes because I'm beginning with a, a problem in the text or problem in the world, that I want to work that language enough so that it feels like it is now mine. And when it's released back into the world as these things, uh, that the problem is transferred back onto the viewer, that the problem is now yours. And so when it's hard to see, it's always intentional. Mm -hmm.